So anyway, I am from New York, and I was singing secular music. I made my first recording when I was in elementary school, and I got solos, and so I got the big head, and I was going to go to the city and be rich and famous, of course, right? And I sang with Pavarotti, and then I sang in bands, and I recorded, um, I sang in a punk rock band, <laughs> and recorded albums, and then I moved to New York to do more of the same. I wrote my own music. I want to stick, try to stick with the theme of today as grace abounds all the more. In New York City, you know, it, they say it's evil in New York City, but where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And I, I love the big city because there's a lot of God there, and God met me there. I wasn't planning on meeting God in New York City, but he had a plan anyway. So I realized that the songs that I was singing, you know, they're love songs. We love God, and uh, we, we were looking for love, maybe females more than male, men. And the love songs I was singing are idealistic, so really I've discovered that the only one who could live up to that was Jesus. And to put all that on a man to fulfill our heart's desire to, to make us feel as loved as deeply as we want to feel loved is not going to happen. They're just companions in, in this realm, in this life, until we get to heaven. Jesus is our, our soulmate. He's the one that our, our hearts are restless until we rest in him. So I figured, you know that scripture that says, um, I wish you were hot or cold. But since you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. And I'm thinking, oh, gee, these secular songs, while they're nice, they're not evil. I'm not singing about bad things. And, the, you know, my party tunes were just fun and have, you know, dance and have a good time. It's good to cut loose every once in a while. But there it was a distraction from the one true goal, which is to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. So um, I decided why not? Why be lukewarm? Why not just sing directly about Jesus? And then help everyone else to foster a prayer life that will help them get closer to God, which is our true goal. And I loved that when I was in the city, the scripture that kept popping out to me was, um, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So. I no longer wanted the, the record deal, and I, was, I no longer was looking for financial backing to record my own secular music. I didn't want it anymore. And um, it was nice of the Lord thinking back of it. I'm grateful that he changed my heart's desire, because that was my heart's desire. So I guess the prayer was to be open. Lord, if you have something different for me, change my heart's desire. And so my desire became to sing prayers. And I was thinking, eh, nobody wants song prayers. Who's, who's going to be interested in that? But that was what I was inspired to do and led. And you always go where you're led. And um, grace does build upon grace. So you start somewhere with the little bit that you're given, but you follow it, you're true to it. And then God takes you to the next level, to the next thing, and gives you more grace. And then you follow that, and you're true to that. And so I started singing these prayers, fully expecting them to not be you know, that interesting. But people who are hungry, they like to pray. And, and to get a song stuck in your head that would actually affect eternity instead of waste your time. Right? How many times do you go to the grocery store, and they're playing a song, and it gets stuck in your head, and you sing it the rest of the day? You're like, oh, I need deliverance from this song. Really, you have to do an exorcism just to get it out of your mind. But if you can get a prayer stuck in your head, then you could affect eternity. Wouldn't that be something useful? So I want to do something useful. So um, one of the prayers, I just want to make sure I'm not skipping anything. I started singing these prayers, and then in trying to sell these prayers, I was invited to a Marian conference, and I was asked, do you sing the rosary? And um, I'm trained, you always say yes, and then figure it out later. <laughs> but I had sung the rosary because my commute from Jersey to New York City was exactly an hour, and I'd, I always prayed the rosary. And so I decided to sing it. 
And I'm all tickled inside. I'm thinking, oh, Mary must love this. I think she just loves this singing. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. So it would take a little bit longer than 20 minutes to sing a rosary. So I said yes, and I had to record it really fast right there in my home and send it to them, and they wanted me to sing it. And there was no way I was ever going to sing a rosary. But I sang it there, and I had a table of people write their names. They wanted a copy. And so I had to sing it. So I had to go home and convince my husband that I, because he was not into Mary at all. Actually, he was anti-Mary. So um, I told him that I got all these names that people want me to sing the rosary. And he was, you know, so he said, OK. <laughs> all under obedience, I sang the rosary, and I'm on my way. And I, just, I always joke that I have a pushy Jewish mother in heaven. I wasn't going to sing the rosary, but she twisted, she made it happen. She twisted. Now don't say, your mother was Jewish? No. My mother's Italian from the Bronx, but my mother Mary is my pushy Jewish mother in heaven. Right? And yours too. Keep a relationship with her. Pray the rosary every day. Um, I'm sure you're, you're good praying Catholic women, but if there's any one of you in here that do not pray the rosary every day, I cannot stress enough how important that is and how beneficial it will be to your entire life. And it should be the very basis of your, your vocal prayer life. And if it could lead you to meditation, even better. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to talk about prayer because as women, it's the most powerful, most important thing that we can do in our lives and the lives of our family. So I'm going to stress that terribly.